So it's 2019 and man, I haven't been out to the workshop since uh, September last year. I mean, I've been out here, but I haven't actually done any work. I think the last job I done out here was the rotisserie, which is over there, for the front subframe on the Black Pearl. So I'm back out here today and the plan is to get started or get back to work on the Black Pearl. And this engine here is my top priority at the moment. It's the part of the car that is going to take the longest to get done and because the block needs machined and it's probably the most important part of the Black Pearl it is the heart of the car. And the plan is to strip it down to a block and take it down to Rob Beer Racing in Coventry who is going to do some machine work on the block for me. I'm planning to rebuild the engine to a much better spec with much more power. The clock is ticking until the next rally. I have at the moment 104 days to get the whole Black Pearl rebuilt. It's currently in bits and there is everything to do. Removing the cylinder heads off a Jaguar V12 is an absolute nightmare, as I have found out over the last three days. Just got this head off, and I've still to remove the other head. Literally, it's taken me days, and I've hired a van. I'm taking this engine here down to Coventry tomorrow morning, very early, 
and I need to have this head off and everything off, some of the studs off. Basically, this has to be a block without pistons, without anything. So I need to get this head off. I mean, that head off. And it's been an absolute nightmare. I'm not even joking. It took three days to get that head off. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep working on it and I'm going to try to get this other head off. Why are Jaguars so complicated? the V12 now stripped down to a block and it's now ready to go in the van and I'm going to head home, get some sleep, get up very early and start heading south. It's been an absolute mission to get the block stripped down. It's the first time I've stripped the V12 block, uh, sorry, a V12 down to the block and uh, I hope I don't have to do it anytime soon. But then that's the whole objective of this is to build a reliable V12 engine which will last in the peril for many rallies to come. Don't laugh. Oh my god, my hair is a mess. So it's uh, 5.30 in the morning. Um, Dad and myself, we left. Uh, we left the workshop around about midnight, slept for four hours, and we left home at 4.30 a.m. And we're now in the hire van. We're on our route to Coventry to see Rob at Rob Beer Racing, where we're gonna be dropping off the Jaguar V12 engine that we stripped down yesterday. There it is! And there's that. We're on a bit of a mission, we're also dropping off this bonnet and the boot there at uh, Scott who is going to make a carbon fibre version of both of them. Then, we're picking up a car. A car which probably isn't going to even make it back up to Scotland. So, this is a mission. You know, I love a good mission. just arrived at Rob Beer Racing in Coventry. This old workshop is bursting with history. Rob and Carl have been building engines since the late 80s and work exclusively on Jaguar performance related products. From the first Lister XGSs to the FIA Historic GT Championship winning E-Type. Over the years they have developed a fearsome reputation for building race engines, which is exactly why I brought the Pearls engine to Rob. So Rob has had a quick look at the uh, engine I brought down. And it turns out that the crankshaft is knackered, so I need a new crank. Uh, that was after the engine blew on the way to Venice last year on Austrian Alps. A couple of con rods are also gone, so I need new con rods and I need to find a second hand crank. So a little bit of extra work, but uh, in the meantime Rob's going to do some work to the block. He's going to be putting in 6.8 litre liners and new pistons, or no, in fact, I'm gonna buy the pistons and I have to put them in. And he's gonna do a bit of work to the head to make it flow a little bit better. So uh, hopefully we're on target for a very fast black pearl soon. No, 
about 34 miles to Bishop Auckland and we're on our last fill up, we're about to go and drop the van off in about an hour and pick up the Jaguar 420G with the V12 so looking forward to getting there the sun is starting to set, in fact it's already nearly dark and uh, it's freezing We've now arrived at Enterprise in Bishop Auckland. Uh, the van has got us here safe and sound, and Rob is now heading over in the 530G, which is essentially a 420G with a V12 engine to pick us up. And um, we're now gonna get into thermal mode because I'm assuming that this car, given that it's like, I don't know, 50 years old, probably gonna have no heater. Are you in thermal mode yet? Yep. <laughs> layers upon layers upon layers. <laughs> and layered trousers. I'm gonna get into thermal mode. I'm sure it does have a heater, but it probably doesn't work. <laughs> oh, excellent. Look at that. That's Hello, sir. <laughs> How are you doing? Great to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. Wow. Oh, great to see you. Wow. wow. We're here. Thanks for picking us up. Yeah. No worries. Uh, do you want to jump straight in the uh, jump no, seat? No, no, please, Michael, please. I'd, I'd rather you drive it initially. Right. And yeah. But then I thought afterwards when I tried to move this, I thought, maybe you can do I. It is, yeah. So Rob has sold the 420G, as 530G as you name it, uh, for the grand total of... That you know, uh, Thanks for the £500 mark up, and hello no YouTubers! <laughs> <laughs> so he sold it to me for five, £500, um, and on the basis that I could take it on a Rust to Rome trip, or a Rust to somewhere trip at some point. So it is a genuine £500 car, so it's eligible to go on any of the trips. So. Thank you very much, Rob. No worries, right. no worries. Very good. Enjoy. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely get it on the trip at some point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have to get home first, though, which uh, should be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yes. Should be all right, yes. <laughs> yes, just don't reverse back if you have any problems. Keep going forwards. Oh, yeah, there, there's no reverse. <laughs> Are you feeling uh, optimistic, Dad? It'll be a breeze going home. It'll be a breeze. <laughs> I hear there's no heater in the car. No, there's no heater. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rob. Nice one. Oh, I don't lock the bonnet down either. That's my early fire warning detection device. Ah, right. So if you see flames licking up the engine, yeah. stop. you know you're Jump. in trouble. Yes. Is Jump. there a fire extinguisher? Uh, no. No, there's, oh, there's, there's five liters of water. water. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been driving now for around about an hour. So, so far we've learned that it drives really nice, the engine's really sweet. Um, it's got a few things wrong with it, as expected for a 40 year old car. It's a 1968, by the way, we've worked at the year of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know. And uh, the heater is non-existent, so it's basically like sitting in the Arctic Circle. Um, there's loads of heat around about the car, the engine's full of heat, but we're getting none of it. <laughs> So yeah, we're in full thermal mode, or I am anyway, um, and we're just going to keep on driving and see how far we get, but so far it's looking like it might actually make it home. One. slight problem, the uh, way to pull over there's smoke pouring out from the bonnet and it looks like the gearbox has broken or something has broken in it and there's uh, oil pissing, excuse my language, pissing at the bottom of it. So we're somewhere in Leith because we missed the turn off for the bypass which now I'm badly regretting um, and we need to find some oil for the gearbox which is probably not going to help it because it's just going to come pouring out again. So Dad's just jumped in an Uber and um, there's a way to get some oil for the gearbox. We're gonna try and put that in and see if that helps, but 
I'm not feeling too confident. Anyway, I just hope it'll get us home. So that's got the oil and just put the oil in it now and see what happens. So we've put gearbox oil in and amazingly the leak has stopped. I don't know why or how. But I just said to Dad, screw it, let's just go. We're so close to home. Let's just get there. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> oh. We jumped back into the 51-year-old Jaguar 530G and didn't stop driving until we made it home. Despite smoking a bit and a little more oil leaking, it was running great. Not a bad car for £500. I'm sure you'll be seeing more of this fantastic Jaguar in my future vlogs. With the engine dropped off at Rob Beer Racing, the bonnet and boot dropped off with Scott, and finally the Jaguar 530G picked up from Rob in Bishop Auckland, our mission was finally complete. Next, I headed off to Mexico for three weeks to run the Rust to Mexico rally. Meanwhile, Rob was working on the Pearl's engine. I'm now back home and work to the block is complete and ready for me to build back up. The only problem now is I've only got 50 days left to build the Pearl and get it ready for Rust to Rome Austrian Alps this May. The question is, will I get it done on time? Ira, if you can, if you can see this, I'm sorry. I am working in a pool of oil. This is a pool. <laughs> I know that you would, you would hate this. Look at all the oil. <laughs> yeah, I've got Catler on the way. Pretty good. <laughs> the engine's pretty sweet. Has somebody come to see us? <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's, it's just up a little bit, on it. Yeah, it's just so we can right, it, we can tell off the engine on fire that way. It was five hundred quid. Pardon? It was five hundred quid. Never. It was. It was. <laughs> it was. Right. It runs. Yeah. This is the. <laughs> this is the indicator. Detachable. Fell on the floor. I don't know about you, but I am rusting. It's like a racetrack here. <laughs> 